As a beginner, pouring agar can seem daunting. This is because pouring agar improperly can cause fast and irritating contamination. For those who don't know, agar is a naturally occurring gelatin-like substance extracted from seaweed. Once mixed with nutrients, it provides a growth medium for all sorts of microbiological applications. In mushroom growing, agar has many uses. It can be used to isolate cultures from contamination, test cultures viability, expand existing cultures, isolate single spores, and preserve cultures for long periods of time, among a myriad of other uses. One of the most common agar recipes used by mushroom growers is MEA. There are thousands of different jars, pots, and dishes you can pour agar into. I use these polypropylene deli pots from Amazon. Whatever container you choose, make sure the mouth is wide enough to work in with a scalpel if that's your desired goal. Avoid containers that are too deep as this will make it very tricky to extract your culture later on. You don't have to make your lids the same way as I do. However, if you're using plastic and not glass, I would suggest the minimum you do is include a small breather port. During sterilization, the agar may boil over inside the container. Not really a problem if your container is glass with a screw on lid. However, if you're using plastic, it can blow off the lid and leave you with a bit of mess. Adding a small breather port prevents that. For mine, I make two holes, one for the injection port and one for the breather. I start by punching a quarter inch hole in the center for my injection port. Make this smaller than the injection port, that way you can squeeze it through and the injection port will self seal around the hole. I sell these in my shop, links are in the description. I then make a 330 second hole somewhere around the edge for the breather port. I use a punch tool that I got off Amazon, but you could easily use a hot needle, paper punch or even a belt punch. Just make sure it can punch a hole big enough. Next, I squeeze the injection ports through. You can see it bulges out. It's always better to undercut the hole and squeeze them through. I then tape over the breather with micropore tape. If you wanted to get a bit fancier, you could secure some Tyvek over the hole with micropore tape, but the tape alone is fine for the breather purposes. Remember this hole isn't for gas exchange for the mycelium, it's for the cooking process. There's plenty of air inside the container for the mycelium to grow. Sometimes these deli pots aren't the cleanest and they can have residual tags from the injection molding process. Make sure you rip these off as they may cause the lid to seat improperly. I use malt extract agar at 20 parts agar, 20 parts malt and 1000 parts water. You can buy MEA kits from my store. Simply blend it in the correct ratios with warm water until the malt and agar dissolve. With MEA there will always be little bits floating around. These are just crystallised and burnt sugars so nothing really to worry about. I pour these dishes 5 to 10 mil deep depending how steady my hands are. These deli pots are 100 mil so I pour around 20 mil in each. Pouring too deep is a waste of agar, as it's unusual by the mycelium, while pouring too shallow may cause the agar to curl up and dry out prematurely. Place the pots inside your pressure cooker and sterilise for 15 to 20 minutes at 15 psi. Don't stack them more than too high as the heat and the weight of the pots may weaken and distort the plastic. If you want to fill your PC up with these, you can use a round cake cooling rack like these. Just make sure it fits your pressure cooker's diameter and use an appropriate item as a spacer. Once sterilised, allow the PC to cool naturally. Force venting will definitely blow the lids off the deli pots, even with the breather holes. I tend to keep one or two pots in my incubator for a few days to grow out any potential contamination, if there is, as a control. The rest I store anywhere really. Some say store in the fridge, but since they're sterile and sealed it shouldn't really matter where they're stored. Use them as you would any agar plate, grow out your spores, test your liquid culture before putting it on grain, transfer cultures or store your cultures for a short while, the choice is yours. I hope this little guide helped, there's a write up on my website as always, any questions just whack them in the comments below. Cheers.